Bonjour everyone! So, if you've been following me on social media, you know that I just came back from a trip to France and I didn't film a vlog as I normally do when I travel because we were on a baby moon and I didn't want to be working while I'm on a baby moon. But what I thought I would do is I would sort of do a video on some eating tips in France. So if you're gonna go to France in the future, I really believe these will be helpful for you. And as I talk about them, I will be showing you some footage that I did shoot um, to go along with my tips as well. So you still get to see some videos that I shot. Um, so I divided these tips into two main categories. The first lot is sort of what to eat. And then the second lot is sort of how restaurants work because they work a little bit differently. And um, I kind of wish I'd known that going in as well. So I'm going to share some of that tips with you. Let's get started. Tip number one, don't just eat out. Now, before you go, hey, I don't want to cook while I'm on vacation. No, 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 no. You don't have to cook, but here's what I'm talking about. In France, just about every city, wherever you go, you're going to find that there are farmers markets that happen, definitely on the weekend and some on the weekdays as well. So I would find out when those markets are happening go there it's a foodie heaven and when you're there here's what you should get some cheese definitely some raw milk cheeses because you can't get that if you're in north america so le cru is the word that you're looking for for uh, raw milk um, you want to get some charcuterie maybe some strawberries french strawberries are delicious by the way um, rotisserie chicken Every farmer's market will have a rotisserie chicken stand. It's a thing there, you should get one of those. And then, if it's a nice day out, you go and have a picnic with your market find. It's a beautiful thing, delicious thing to do. If it's not nice out, like when we were there, it was freezing cold. So what we did was we went back to the hotel. And which brings me to a sub suggestion for your trip to France is if you're not staying at an apartment rental, like they, there are many vacation apartment rentals, make sure you choose a hotel that's a appa hotel. They're basically half hotel, half apartment. And all that means is you will have a fully equipped kitchen in your hotel room, complete with stove, fridge, cutlery, wine glasses, everything. So you can actually have a nice little platter with your market score. So we did that twice, once in Paris and once in Aix-en-Provence. And they were honestly my favorite, some of my favorite eating moments in France was just enjoying the stuff that you found from the market. Next, seek out some classic French dishes. In the same way that if you go to Thailand, you wanna have your pad thai and your tom yum, if you don't know what some of the classic French dishes are, make sure you research them, write them down. You can find classic French dishes at many, many restaurants. Things like coco vin, which is a chicken braised in red wine. You might want a pot au feu, which is like a beef and vegetable soup, or in my case, veal and vegetable soup, or some classic pastries like a Paris Brest, or oh, an île flottant, which is like a fluffy meringue floating in a creme anglaise. Oh, and my God, do not leave France without having tried a croissant or a pain au chocolat. Just like that's a sin. Even if you have 24 hours in France, you must try them because they are so much better there than in at least in North America anyway. And you can find a bakery like every other block. So there should be no reason why you don't get to try a croissant or a pain au chocolat. Wherever you are in France, make sure you find out what the local specialty food is. The French are really into local food items, whether it's a dish or an ingredient or a wine or cheese. So you want to find out what those are and don't miss those. For example, when we were in Lyon, they have a special dish called quenelle, which is kind of like a fish mousse, but the way I describe it is like an Asian fish ball, like the ones in noodle soup, but bigger and fluffy and soft in the cream sauce delicious. They also have pra praline rose, which is candied almonds, basically like almond praline, but hot pink. And they put that in a lot of different pastries. So you walk around Lyon and you just see all these pink pastries everywhere. Um, and when we were in Aix-en-Provence, they have a little sweet called calisson. Not my favorite. It's made from almond paste and melon and uh, I think lemon zest. I don't like almond pasty things. So it wasn't my favorite, but I tried it anyway because you know what? When in X, you gotta try one of those. If you are hungry and you are looking for a good deal, order the set menu. Just about every restaurant, even casual ones, have some sort of a combo that you can order for a fixed price. And it's always a much better deal than ordering things a la carte, right? So 
But let me explain a little. So the me when you go to a restaurant, the menu that you get, like the book with the list of things, that is not called le menu. That is called la carte. Okay. Le menu refers to the prefix menu that I was talking about. So in your carte, you're going to see le menu. Usually it's like a three course meal. So it would be entrée, plat, dessert. So appetizer, main course and dessert. Yes, entrée in French does not mean entrée. We're using it wrong. It means appetizer. For more casual places, it might only be a two combo thing like uh, entrée plat or plat dessert. For fancier places, they might have four. They'll add a fromage, which is a cheese course that comes at the end of your meal. So right before dessert, highly recommend that. But make sure you're hungry because it's going to be a lot of food. And <laughs> we did that just about everywhere we went and we were full all the time. Finally, try something that you might consider weird food. The French eat a much wider variety of foods, especially meats, than people do in North America. So now's a good opportunity to try them. It might be escargot, which is snails, um, or it might be something called riz de veau, which is sweet bread, and you can find that more commonly than you can find here in North America. I myself, I try what they call boulot, which are whelks or a type of sea snails. Delicious, they're so good. Could be something even more tame, something like rabbit or pheasants, even they have a lot of game over there too. You definitely find something you've never had before if you go to enough restaurants, so don't let that opportunity go by. So let's move on to tips about navigating the way French restaurants operate. Firstly, and importantly, operating hours. French restaurants do not open between lunch and dinner, or many of them don't open, especially the nice ones, and their operating hours are very tight. Lunch is between noon to two, sometimes 2.30, and then they close and they do not open again for dinner until seven. Okay, so that's a long break. So if you find yourself hungry in between, what I would do if I found myself hungry is find yourself a boulangerie, which is a bakery, and they often have sandwiches or sometimes even like pre-made salad or just like a savory bread type thing that you can have to tie you over until seven o'clock, some even 7.30 before the restaurants will open. French restaurants will serve bread with everything. Doesn't matter if you ordered a sandwich, you will still get a basket of bread on the table, okay? So don't be alarmed. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. If you finish it, they will refill it at no charge. And for those of us who are Asian, and if you're used to nice, soft, fluffy bread, the French breads are a lot chewier and crustier. It is not anything like breads in Asia. So like I know my mom would never like French bread because she loves soft fluffy bread, um, but it's delicious. Their breads are really tasty and flavorful. So don't be alarmed by like how hard they are to begin with. You know, give them a try. <laughs> oh, and by the way, they're not going to come with butter. They're not going to come with oil, vinegar, anything to dip it in. You're just going to get plain bread and they're not going to be warm. They're going to be room temperature, just FYI. Coffee. Coffee in France works a little differently. When you sit down and order a coffee, un café, what you will get is an espresso, okay? They don't do big thermoses of brewed coffee that fills your 12 ounce mugs. No, they don't do that. Um, if you want something with more volume than just an espresso, you can order a café allongé. Café allongé is basically espresso with more water in it, but it's still small. Like you're gonna get, instead of this much coffee, you're now gonna get this much coffee. You're not gonna get a 12 ounce coffee anywhere except at Starbucks, which is, by the way, incredibly expensive in France. Let's talk French servers. I have to say, though, I had great experience with French servers. Everybody was super nice and everything, but it does require that you understand how they work. And they work more similarly to Thai servers, so I was used to it. One difference is that they will not check on you mid-meal. They drop your food and they will let you enjoy your food uninterrupted. So if you need their attention again, you simply just call them over and you just say, s'il vous plaît, which means please, and they will come to you no problem. They will also not bring you your check when you are done. 
okay? You have to ask for it, which I actually really like because then it doesn't feel like they're rushing you. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can get up and go pay at the cash register. That's normal as well. And you do not have to tip. It is not required that you tip, but if you had a really great experience and you want a tip, they will appreciate it. So the next tip was definitely important for me because I was pregnant during this trip. Um, and that is French people smoke a lot more than people here in North America. And when it became an issue is in restaurants because if you walk along Paris, you're gonna see these beautiful little brasserie that are so cute and so French and they have all these chairs outside on the sidewalk. And I was so tempted to just go sit and enjoy and people watch and then be very French with my cafe. But I couldn't because most of the time, whoever is sitting outside, they are smoking. They don't smoke inside. I would just warn you that if you don't want to smell cigarette smoke and you see an empty patio, don't be tempted to sit there because you never know who might join you later and then you're going to be s smelling cigarettes for the rest of the meal. So just FYI. Finally, French restaurants don't always have boxes for you to pack up your leftovers. I believe it's not a thing there. Not once did I ever see anybody pack their things home. And if I ate and I had leftovers on my plate, not once did servers ever ask me if I wanted to take it home. So as I understand it, it's just not done. And if you're in a sit down restaurant, they're probably not gonna even have boxes for you because if they don't do takeout, they're not going to have boxes for any reason. So you could always ask, but don't be surprised if they say no. Now, if you're in a place that also do takeout and they clearly have boxes, then you know you can ask and they'll probably give it to you. What I don't know, and please anyone who's French, please, you know, give me your thoughts here. I don't know if it's considered rude or not classy to ask. You know, like, is it okay to ask and be rejected or is it just like, we shouldn't even ask at all? So let me know. And I'm going to leave you with one bonus tip on how to be treated well in France. So I didn't have a single bad experience with rude French servers or anything that you might have heard. Like everybody was nice and professional, but I did do my research. So I'm gonna pass on my research to you. When you're in France, be before you say anything to anybody, the first word that should come out of your mouth is bonjour. You walk into a restaurant, bonjour to whoever sees you, in a store, anywhere. In France, it is considered rude to start a conversation with someone without saying hello first, okay? Excuse me is not good enough. So if you're trying to get a store, a store clerk's attendant, you can't just go up and say, excusez-moi, that's not cool either. You have to say, bonjour, excusez-moi, and then go on with your, whatever you're saying. And say it with a smile, of course, some smile always helps everything. And that, I have not gotten a single bad experience when I did that all the time. Bonsoir for evening time, so if the sun has set, switch to bonsoir. Um, be very, very, very generous with your merci, which is thank you, and your s'il vous plaît, which is please. And when you leave, wherever you're at, the restaurant or the store, always say au revoir, which is goodbye, or bonne journée, which is have a good day, or say, you know, you have to say hi when you leave and bye when you no, hi when you arrive and bye when you leave, basically. And if you do that, I promise you, you're going to have a good time. And if they're still rude, you know what? Some people just have bad days and that happens everywhere, right? And as a bonus for our Patreon members, for the show after the show, I'm gonna share with you my experience eating at a three Michelin star restaurant in France, complete with footage and my commentary. It was amazing. If you wanna find out how to join the club, I put the link in the description below. I hope that was useful. So these are just some of my experience that I have learned. I did some research before I went and I gathered some more knowledge while I was there. Obviously I was only there once. So if you have more tips, some more insights to share, definitely share it with us in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, this is not really a typical thing that I do on the show, but normally we do tons of recipes and some travel stuff as well. Subscribe anyway, because it's awesome. And click the bell icon so you get a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.